Welcome to episode 7 of Chiptune Tech. My name is Anthony Hom. I apologize for the long break that we've had since the last episode. I will typically update this podcast when I have content to record for it. I don't mean for this to sound like an excuse, but I also work on two other podcasts. I work on the Reanimator Pod, which is a weekly Japanese animation podcast. I do the audio for them. I、um, work the mixer board and I also、uh, master the audio files for them. I also host a podcast called Between Two Pixels, and it is a podcast that goes into the history behind、uh, classic games. I'm、uh, currently working on Tetris. I'm getting through some,、uh, some books and doing a little talk about Tetris and the history behind it and the people involved. Those two podcasts tend to update a little more frequently than this one. I'll try to actively create more content for this podcast in the future. I know that there are a number of listeners that come to this podcast to look for information, and that's what I hope that I am offering to all of you. Okay, let's get right into it.、Um, in terms of、uh, Chiptune Tech, Chiptune Tech is created to disseminate information regarding the tech side of the house when it comes to Chiptune hardware. Mods, accessories, and all of the amazing chiptune innovations that people are doing to bring a brighter future to its music scene. Om Nom Nom is a collective of musicians, artists, tech heads, and writers with a passion for chiptune music and also retro gaming and old computers. We hope to share our information and passion to all of you. If you are interested in submitting content such as audio, video, or articles to OmnomNom, please send us an email at mikey at omnomnom.com. I'll have the email address in the show notes. In this series of episodes, I'll be going over a number of Game Boy consoles and how well they stack up when it comes to making chiptune music. In the last episode, I went over the DMG01. In this episode, I will be talking about the pros and cons of the Game Boy Color when it comes to making chiptune music. The Game Boy Color was the third offering from the Game Boy line from Nintendo, and it was released two years after the Game Boy Pocket. The Game Boy Color hit the streets of Japan on October 21st, 1998, and it hit U.S. shores later that year in November, just in time for Christmas. The production of the Game Boy Color ended in March of 2003, and it was succeeded by the Game Boy Advance. The Game Boy Advance, at least the first version of it, was、uh, that one with the screen in the middle and the D pad on the left side and your buttons on the right side. And it was the first Game Boy to come with、uh, shoulder buttons your left shoulder button, your right shoulder button. The Game Boy Color was capable of producing 32,768 colors, and it was able to display up to 56 different colors at the same time on the screen. The Game Boy Color took two AA batteries. It also came with an infrared wireless communications port so that you could wirelessly connect with another Game Boy to do things like trade Pokemon, or you could play two player games that were offered on the Game Boy and the Game Boy Color. Along with it having its wireless communications port to wirelessly link up with another Game Boy Color, it also came with a physical link port so that if you wanted to trade Pokemon with, say, someone with a Game Boy Color or a DMG01 Game Boy, you could link up with them in that fashion. So, with the Game Boy Color, I feel like its size was very comparable to the Game Boy Pocket versus, say, the DMG01. The DMG01 was a very hefty Game Boy, and it was known as the brick because it kind of felt like you were holding a brick in your hands. The Game Boy Color, on the other hand,、um, it felt more like a Game Boy Pocket to me, holding it in my hands. And it had sort of like this curved bottom portion where the battery cover was. And、um, it was kind of like the booty of the Game Boy Color. So, it had like this curved ness to it where you had to kind of hold your hands together, interlocking your fingers when you were playing the system. Let us start out with the positives of the GBC for making chiptune music. The GBC runs on two AA batteries, as I said before, versus the four AA batteries of a DMG01. 
If you are a fan of alkaline batteries versus uh, rechargeable batteries, you'll be able to save a little cash on the amount you purchase. You would literally be saving half the money than if you were using a DMG01 system. The GBC will be able to handle whatever you throw at it in LSDJ. In episode 6 of Chiptune Tech, I talked about how the DMG01's CPU had trouble keeping up with high BPM songs and accurately playing back noise instruments with multiple shape commands in rapid succession. The GBC's secret weapon is its CPU. In order to help the GBC process all those colors and sprites at the same time on the screen, it had two separate operating modes. Under normal circumstances, the GBC would run at 4.194 MHz, but when the GBC started to display a high number of colors and multiple sprites on the screen at the same time, it needed more power to support that. So the CPU would switch over to its secondary mode, which uh, bumped up the processing speed to 8.388 MHz. So in the secondary mode where the GBC's CPU would switch into for processing at a higher speed, it translates very well to LSDJ. If you compose very high BPM songs and you have very, very intricate table commands, or if you do lots of different shape commands in the noise channel, the GBC will be able to play all of those back without a hitch. When you use the DMG01, and if you play a song that's too high of a BPM, or if there's too much going on for the CPU to process, the DMG-01 will just simply freeze. The GBC, I've tried very like crazy, ridiculous sort of commands and tables and everything. Anything that I threw at it, like it just handled like a champ. If you're making like really heavy, like thrash music or just anything like super nuts, um, the GBC will be able to handle it no problem. Okay, um, let's go into some negative points of the GBC or negative points that I kind of find about the GBC. In stock form, the sound output from a Game Boy Color is very low when it comes to like audio levels, both out of the speaker and the headphone jack. If you're the type of person that's planning to play your Game Boy or Game Boy Color games, on a Game Boy Color, I would recommend that if you are using headphones for you to purchase a headphone amplifier, or if you don't plan on using headphones to use a set of computer speakers, something with like an auxiliary input so that you can actually hear your game that you're playing. There tends to be a lot of static hiss and hum from a Game Boy Color. So if you are planning to record straight from the headphone jack of an unmodified Game Boy Color, you'll be getting really low audio levels along with some humming and static hiss. If you're planning on using it and want to get a clean signal out of it, I highly recommend using a summing and signal inversion device such as the PissBox, spelled P-I-S-S-B-O-X. Last I checked, they were being sold at Kitchbent. If you are not planning on purchasing yourself a piss box, you could go and modify your Game Boy Color with a noise filtering mod, and that requires the use of a single capacitor. The GBC also does not have the same bassy punch as the DMG-01 Game Boy, but that could be remedied by performing a GBC bass mod. The bass mod is a little more involved than, say, the noise filtering mod, but it will really help out by raising the lower frequencies and putting a lot of bass and thud into your music. In the show notes for this episode, I'll include the URL to the tutorial I made about the GBC bass mod, and it'll be um, located at chipmusic.org. The GBC has a non-lit color LCD screen. To me, the details on the screen are a bit hard to make out if there's a lot of dark colors. Even in like really good lighting situations, I just don't feel like it's the best thing out there. I kind of prefer the Game Boy Pocket screen over the Game Boy Color screen. It is possible to install a front light panel from an AGS-001 Game Boy Pocket SP or with an aftermarket front light panel um, that come out of Asia. These uh, aftermarket panels and also the Game Boy SP frontlit screen 
They do really well when you combo them up with UV activated loca glue. Um, that's spelled L O C A. And that tends to yield the best results in the front light mod for the Game Boy Color. In the first quarter of 2017, there were rather expensive Game Boy Advance SP LCD screens with adapter cables for the Game Boy Color coming out of Asia. Prior to this, there was a gentleman by the name of Jerry Zhang, and I believe he was either from China or from Hong Kong. I can't remember exactly uh, what location he was based out of, but I actually sent him a message. I found him on Facebook, and he was actually providing converter cables, ribbon cables, for uh, putting a Game Boy Advance SP backlit screen into your Game Boy Advance Classic. And that was a very popular mod for a while, but um, a lot of the supply dried out. And when I asked him uh, if he had any more, he said no, but he was looking into uh, getting more produced. So that's more of the Game Boy Advance side of the house when it comes to modding the screen. However, there is a modder in Australia who goes by the name Benven, and he has designed and produced his own adapter ribbon cables for using a Game Boy Advance SP backlit screen and putting it into your Game Boy Color. It is a lot more affordable and economic than those initial adapter ribbon cables that were coming out of Asia at the beginning of 2017. So the Game Boy Color has more curves on it than, say, the DMG-01 Game Boy. It has, like, that booty on it on the bottom with the battery cover, and it's considerably smaller than the DMG-01. I feel like it's almost too small. I don't have very big hands, and for me, I feel like it's too small. When I personally compose little ditties or tunes on LSDJ, I tried to use the DMG-01 because I feel like it's very comfortable to hold. So I feel, at least for me, the most comfortable way to compose an LSDJ is to use a Super Nintendo or a Super Famicom with a Super Game Boy and composing on like a big screen TV or a monitor. I won't have to squint as much as I already do and I'll be able to comfortably compose on a couch just chilling. So I feel like along with the Game Boy Color case itself being pretty small, um, everything else is also small on it. The D-pad, the BNA buttons, the start and select buttons are smaller than the DMG-01. They more closely resemble the Game Boy Pocket, in my opinion. But, you know, if, if you like composing on a Game Boy Color, then more power to you. The start and select buttons can be pretty hard to press if they are gunked up. So I highly recommend if you get a Game Boy Color, first thing you do is crack that sucker open, get some Q-tips and uh, some rubbing alcohol and clean up the PCB, clean up the membrane pads that go under the D-pad, the B and A buttons, and the membrane pad of the start and select buttons themselves. And you shouldn't have an issue with um, starting a song or navigating screens in LSDJ. When it comes to modifying the Game Boy Color, I would say that it's not as modder friendly as a DMG-01, but it's not impossible to work on. It's definitely not as hard to work on as, say, the Game Boy Advance SP. Something that was nice about the DMG-01 for modding was that it had a lot of extra space inside of the case. So you could put uh, audio jacks, you could put extra PCBs in there, um, you could add lots of different stuff in there and just like shove them inside the case between the PCB and the shell, and it would fit like very well. Um, the Game Boy Color uh, is more form-fitting to the PCB. There aren't a ton of places you could put things in, but you can use a Dremel and file things down or use like a, a needle file or a hand file and kind of make some spaces more accessible. With Nintendo handheld consoles that are smaller and more form-fitting to the PCBs, such as the Game Boy Pocket, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Light, um, a lot of people do an internal Pro Sound mod. And what that is, is um, you tap into the pre-potentiometer audio signals, and you just route them straight to the headphone jack on the PCB of the handheld device. So you turn the stock headphone jack into the pro sound jack. So for me, I like adding audio connectors to handhelds. And 
if I had the option to do an internal ProSound mod or to add an additional audio jack, I would always add an additional audio jack. I just like the idea of keeping the headphone jack just stock and just it does what it's supposed to do without being funky or any other things happening to it. Some people like the internal ProSound mod and, you know, if that's your flavor of tea, then go for it. So for the Game Boy Color, there's not a lot of space inside the shell to add things, but um, for the Game Boy Color, I like adding RCA jacks for ProSound or the GBC base mod, and I always add them underneath the battery compartment. So if you have an atomic purple Game Boy Color, which is like semi-see-through, it's like opaque, you could turn it around, and if you look under the battery cover, you'll see like this horizontal ridge that runs across the back of the Game Boy Color. You can go and open up your case and get a pair of pliers or diagonal cutters or a file, and you'll be able to kind of uh, just take that out, and that will allow you to have more space inside the Game Boy Color to add things like RCA jacks. So another point when it comes to modding for the Game Boy Color is that the PCB contains SMD components. And um, they are a lot smaller than the through-hole components on a DMG-01. For me, soldering to SMD components was very intimidating at first. But with enough practice, uh, you'll be doing great. I suggest looking up YouTube videos on soldering SMD components to PCBs. I also suggest just practicing. Grab some electronics that you are about to toss out rip them open and practice uh, desoldering components from the PCB. And you can try and practice soldering them back on, and that's completely fine. Anything that gets you practice with that soldering iron. Okay, so like the proper way to solder or desolder SMD components from a PCB would be to use a hot air reflow station or a rework station. And all it does is it blows hot air through a metal tube and you're able to get the solder down to its melting point and you'll be able to remove components either with like a little suction dealio or with uh, tweezers. And um, you don't necessarily need a hot air reflow station to do that. You can totally use a soldering iron with a small enough tip. And if you have flux with you, that helps a lot with kind of taking out extra solder that you may have like splashed onto the PCB board or it helps you uh, solder items to the PCB board that are really small such as SMD components. But with enough practice, you'll do great. So I was a complete noob back in 2011, but then now like I could solder to SMD components no sweat. You just need to get that practice, get that confidence in and you'll be just kicking butt. So don't worry about it. Like you got this. So a chiptune artist that I really respect told me one time that the GBC was the most accurate when it came to playing back samples on the Wave channel in LSDJ. And I went to try to test this out. I grabbed the Hadoken sample from uh, Street Fighter 2, Ryu's Hadoken, and I made a kit out of it in LSDJ. And I played it back on a DMG-01 Pro-sounded Game Boy and a bass-modded noise-filtered Game Boy Color. I compared both of the waveforms together and the DMG-01 had more of a smooth waveform while the Game Boy Color had more of a stepped waveform. They looked different uh, in terms of the waveforms in uh, Adobe Audition. However, to my ears, and I tried listening very, very carefully, I could barely tell a difference. So when it comes to samples, at least to my ears, I really don't hear much of a difference. If there's someone else out there that um, maybe could explain it a little better to me or if they definitively know if the Game Boy Color can pump out the best samples in the Wave Channel or if the DMG-01 handles that pretty well, just like let me know. But at least to my ears, they both sounded the same even though the waveforms did look a little different. Maybe the Game Boy Color uh, sounded a little crisper, but may that was like it. So um, I, I really can't tell you. Maybe you're into how the DMG-01 sounds uh, when it plays samples or the Game Boy Color. But at least to my friend, 
he felt like the Game Boy Color did uh, the best when it came to samples. The Game Boy Color in its stock form isn't very impressive to me, but when you mod it with the noise filtering mod, the base mod, and if you can get a screen mod to it, like it just wrecks house, it just wrecks face uh, making chiptune music with. It'll handle anything you throw at it, and you'll be able just to make whatever songs you want, and you're good to go. I highly recommend checking out Benven for his mods for the Game Boy Color, the DMG-01, so on and so forth. I believe he's on Shopify, he's definitely on Facebook, and he helps stock um, retromodding.com. I'll include all those links in the show notes. In my opinion, if you are not going to be composing songs uh, with extremely high BPM or making anything with elaborate table commands, I suggest using a ProSound DMG-01. I also suggest using an emulator if you don't have access to a flash cart or to a physical like Game Boy handheld. In terms of availability, I feel like I come across more Game Boy Colors in the wild than I do uh, classic DMG-01 Game Boys. If you're able to get a Game Boy Color and you have a flash cart, by all means, go ahead, try it out, see what's up. The Game Boy Color all decked out with the base mod and the noise filtering mod, and especially if it has a Game Boy Advance SP backlit screen, it is a beast to produce on. It's a Pomeranian with the bite of a bulldog. It is just it, it is just crazy. It is just wild. If you want to hear me gush more about the GBC, go back and listen to episodes three and four of the Chiptune Tech podcast. So back before I moved out of America, I remembered Game Boy Colors being $15 a pop and DMG-01's minimum going for about 20 bucks. Your Game Boy Color may or may not come with a battery door cover fret not there are a lot of suppliers out there like uh ben van um kitsch bent i'm I'm maybe non-finite does it as well you'll be able to find battery door covers in all types of colors for your game boy color i was never a big fan of the infrared linking capabilities of the game boy color i remember doing it a couple of times with my brother but other than that i feel like it was more of a novelty than anything um if you need more space inside the game boy color for modding definitely unsolder the ir leds and you're good to go all relevant links about the topics i talked about uh, will be listed in the annotations of this podcast it'll also be available on omnomnom.com it'll also be available on the youtube video if you have any questions comments or concerns We'd love to hear from you. Please send us an email at mikey at omnomnom.com. That's M-I-K-E-E at om, O-H-M, nom, N-O-H-M, and another nom, N-O-H-M dot com. Uh, let us know uh, what you think about the podcast. Uh, if there's anything that you want us to talk about, hit Mikey up and then he'll like let me know what's good and I'll try to throw it into the mix. Yeah, let us know what your favorite color is. Do you like pie? Do you like raspberry pie? Do you like the retro pie? Uh, let us know what's good, all right? If you watch current anime, consider giving Reanimator Pod a listen. Twice a month, I help them out with their mixing board, and I master all their audio. And if you like old video games and stuff, uh, try giving my other podcast a listen. It's called Between Two Pixels. All right, um, that's all from me uh, for this episode of Chiptune Tech. Thank you all for watching. And again, ah, not watching, listening. Thank you all for listening. And again, happy modding. All right, peace. Bye.